Okay, we're going to talk about Mesh Smooth, which is a simple modifier that can make um, what are non-organic objects into real nice organic shapes. I've got a scene here if you want to follow along. Using Mesh Smooth really isn't very hard. The tricky part is just figuring out the shape that you need to start with. So I've got three shapes here. I'm going to isolate each one and kind of work with Mesh Smooth and add some, some uh, parts of Mesh Smooth to each one. I'm going to right click on, select the box and right click on it and hit isolate selection. It's an edit poly. This box has just been made with bevel. I've beveled in and down to make the box shape. I'm going to apply the mesh smooth modifier to it right here. And you'll see it makes kind of a bowl shaped object. I'm going to, um, Go over here at the top of Mesh Smooth, and you get some different choices. There's NERMS and Quad Output. You'll see Quad Output's a little bit different. There's the classic one, too, if you'd like to use that. Each one of these has different parts that become available down here. and Some areas will gray out depending on which one you use. I either use NERMS or the classic. I'm not crazy about the quad. I think the quad, you lose some functionality with it, but you can use that if you want. I'm going to go to NERMS for this one. And this iteration button is very important. If we go to 2, you'll see that it gets really nice and smooth. And it's actually rendering this way, even though the you're seeing the, the quad patches here. You'll see that it renders. I can go to three or four and it'll become extremely smooth. Now every time we do that, we're adding polygons to it. You'll see that if I collapse this down, I've added a lot more polygons. Still nowhere near enough to worry about at that point. But if I go to my iterations of four and I collapse it down, you'll see we have a lot more polygons. And you're going to start slowing your machine down if you add too many iterations. I would go to 2 to be safe, 3 if it's a simple object, but I wouldn't go above 3, especially if you're using NERMS. Under the classic output, you can see the polygons as you go. You're not dealing with those quad patches like in NERMS. So some people tend to like this classic output a little bit better. You can see the quad output is kind of a combination of both of them. So that's why I like either NERMS or classic. Okay, I'm going to go back to NERMS for this, and I'm going to have an iteration of, um, I'm going to go with 3, since this is a fairly simple shape. So that's our first shape. Now, all we did was apply Mesh Smooth to that and play with the iterations on it. Okay, I'm going to get out of my um, isolation mode. I'm going to delete this object so it doesn't slow down my scene as I go on to the next one. The next one's this one. I'm going to isolate this object. I'm going to hit G to get rid of this grid, because I don't like the grid. All right, and I'm going to apply Mesh Smooth to this. There we go. So now we have this kind of blobby shape that could be used on our tank, like an airfoil or a wings or something. And this time I'm going to go to iterations of 2. Can we go to 3? Let's go to 3 for this. I think 3 will work. We're still okay. And for this, we're going to go down here to this um, sub-object control area. This little area, which looks kind of bland, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot here, really has a lot of cool things in it. I'm going to kick out here to my four view, and so I can grab a hold of these. I'm going to get a hold of the vertexes. You'll see the vertexes are placed where they were on the original object. If I turn off Mesh Smooth, see that's where they were on the original object? Because that's really still where they're at. Mesh Smooth is just averaging together the differences, the distances between these um, vertexes, and that's what's causing this smoothing effect. So the vertexes are still there. And I'm going to grab the vertexes here at the top. So right across the top of my object, you can see I've grabbed all of them in the top area here. I'm also going to grab these in the back. Yeah, that'll work. So I've grabbed all of them on the top of my object. And I'm going to go down here where it says sub-object sub control. I collect vertexes. 
Then under control level, no, sorry, weight, wrong one. I'm going to bump the weight up and watch how it kind of either lifts them up. See how I can make it like a pontoon effect there. Or I can push them down and kind of melt them down so that everything kind of flops down to the ground and makes a much flatter surface. This is a real powerful way to work with Max. I'm going to go back to my original shape. And um, because we can control a lot of our mesh smoothing through these weights. Now I've grabbed the entire middle of this, and if I hit the weight, you'll see I can kind of push and pull areas away from each other using that weight. Okay, I'm going to grab just the bottom just to show you how to control this. And now my weight will either go up, you'll see those curves bending towards it, or it'll flatten out. And so I could have a shape, something like this, which would be extremely hard to model any other way. But using those weights, you can get a real nice organic look to these models. Now, the drawback to Mesh Smooth, let me get this guy centered and I'll render it. Kick it out here. The drawback to Mesh Smooth is it smooths everything. But what if we don't want everything to be smooth? I'm going to go to my edge mode here. And I'm going to select this edge right here. And the same edge over on the other side. And I'm going to hit the crease amount up. Here, let's see, right around there. And now when I render it. Here, let's do this. I'm doing it different than I had planned on doing it. Make sure i got the same ones on either side, yeah. And I'm going to go to Alt-X mode so I can see these creases in here, or these edges. I want that one. I want that one. And I want that one. That one. Make sure I got everything still. Deselected this one by accident. There we go. There we go. I think I got them all. Okay. Get all all text mode. And um, now I'm going to go back over here to my crease. And what it's going to do, see that edge right there that's moving around? If I push that back in, I'm going to get a crease right there when I render it. See how it's creased? And that'll make it so it's not smooth right at that edge. And that's a really good way of modeling nice organic things, but where you want that razor crease there. Let's zoom in on it. Especially with your tanks, because you don't want your tank to look like a pile of goo. You want these nice edges wherever you want your tank to look like it's seamed together. So I grab the edge, and then I set the crease amount up to set that crease. So let's do one more here, because I think this is really one of the neatest functions of Max when it comes to smoothing these things. Grab, oops, wrong one. That one, that one. That one, and one more on the bottom. That one. I oh, can't get a hold of it. That one. I think I deselected my other one. Okay, there we go. And watch when I set this crease amount. See how it's going to push out. Now I can, I can set this crease wherever I want it to be. See, no crease. Zero means no crease. It's just relying on the smoothing group. And then if I bump this up and render it, you'll see this crease starts to appear the higher the number. So if I make it less, there'll be less of a crease there. If I make it more and push it out, I get more of a crease here. It's pushed it out. So I'm going to make it, I think this looks pretty good, right about there. I like the way that looks. 
and I'm going to um, you know, I'll tell you what I like the way this is looking and I think I want to use it in my tank so I'm going to grab this edge this edge, this edge and that edge and I'll flip around to the other side we'll grab these edges here There we go. And all text again is what I'm pushing there to make it see through. I'm going to make that crease come down right about there, and you'll see now we've got this this little creased area. A little bit too creased right there. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So, really nice way to work in Max to get really cool looking kind of razor edged effects is to use the crease and the weights right in here. Okay, I'm going to isolate out of this. I'm going to save that there because I want to work on it later. I'm going to get out of all my um, my uh, sub-object modes and I'm going to right click on this and just hide this one and we'll go back to this guy. Okay, now we do get in these tanks, we get a lot of these insect shells. And for a while, I always had trouble getting them to be nice and sharp where I wanted them to be and smooth where I wanted them to be. They're fairly complex little objects. So we could put treads on this and have kind of like an insect shell looking type thing. We've seen a lot of these in the past. I'm going to click on this guy and add mesh smooth to it really quick. There we go. And I'm going to bump the um, iterations up. Here we are. To two. Just so it's nice and smooth. I'll go ahead and render that right where it is there. And I'm going to use my uh, sub-object control here. In this case, I'm going to do classic. Well, no, I don't want to deal with classic. How about nerms? Too many polygons to deal with classic. And I'm going to go to my... Um, edge mode and I'm going to select this edge right here there we go missed one Okay, I think we got it all the way around, looks good. And I'm going to set the crease on this, and you'll see it start to raise that, that edge, which has been smoothed up and over. And now if I render this, I'll end up with, a much sharper edge here. Let me get a little better angle there so you can see it. I've got a sharp edge here for that little shell piece that's going to come up and over. You can also use it on your vertex level. This is about here to my four views. And if I um, grab, say, this back part of my bug, my bug shell, and I can control the weight, I can move these different shell pieces around to get much more organic type effects. So if I zoom in here, you'll see that I'm pushing these pieces away or pulling them towards those selections. It's kind of like a black hole. It kind of sucks everything into that selection. So lots of different ways to work here. You know, I could, I could push those vertices away at this point, collapse this down, and then I could go back in here and select these polygons that I just made and bevel them out to make a new piece. So right in through here, I could select these polygons, say like that. These are the polygons I just pushed out. How about if we go one more row up? And I could now bevel these out.
and make some new shapes using these um, these controls or push them in. Actually, it might look better if they're pushed in. I think there we go. So now I've created this indented area here. So when you're making these different shapes, kind of be aware of all the different tools that you've got. But the mesh smooth tools are a very nice way to work. When you get into organic characters, like humanoid characters, that crease control really comes in handy. Turn that off. And there we go.